guys. It's been a while. I don't think I need to tell you how crazy difficult this year has been for me, because I think we're all there. So, I'll ask your forgiveness in my brief departure from sharing my creative endeavors, but I've returned, no less eager to extend to you an invitation to join me in my artistic adventures. Our journey harkens back to the early 90s. A young Amanda perched atop a clunky desk chair in front of a gray monitor that ran Windows 95. Encarta Encyclopedia was among my favorite pastimes. I would read about different places, people, animals. I've always been fascinated with the natural world, and I remember loving all the pictures and interactive media I was consuming. That fascination with nature never left me, but I find that, like many, my appreciation for it was diminished to merely looking at things and remarking about their beauty. And then, instead of following my curiosity and exploring the intricacies, that make the world so profound. Well, here we are, after a hard-fought year, and I find myself once again wanting to sit down and learn about what we so often take for granted. And since my skills with pencils and paintbrushes could also use some upgrading, I've decided to combine these things I love, learning and creating, into an audiovisual journal of sorts. This week, I learned about the poplar tree.
When I'm sketching, I like to try to think that this sketch is the only way for me to effectively communicate what I'm seeing with someone else. I imagine that there are no cameras, no videos, and no other means of capturing a moment than with the art that I create. And that's how it used to be, right? And it was their desire to see a moment frozen in time that led some very brilliant minds to challenge their ability to communicate through lead and pigment. My goal for this sketchbook isn't much different. I hope to be able to communicate the feelings I get when I look at a gorgeous sky or take in a beautiful landscape, to allude to the complexity and detail in deceptively simple things like leaves and tree bark. I'm trying not to spend too much time perfecting each element. I have a tendency to lean more toward realism and I have real interest in impressionist style paintings. I like the idea of painting something and the viewer has to use their experiences to fill in the missing pieces. So I guess I'd like to find a balance somewhere between realism and impressionism. I don't think I'm there yet, but I'm having a lot of fun experimenting with different styles.
My husband Alex and I are both musicians. I only loosely apply that term to myself, but he is incredibly talented at playing piano and drums. As with most talents, making any noticeable improvement takes a great deal of determination and self-discipline. He often approaches the more difficult sections of a piece first, so he can spend the time needed to understand and execute that particular passage. I feel like it's similar with my art. It takes a great deal of determination for me not to give up when my paintings hit the ugly stage, where it just looks like I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But even if the end result isn't perfect, I think about what I gain from the practice of making art. More confidence in every stroke, more knowledge of how to use various mediums, and a more refined ability to speak through my art. This was a nice break from a productive day and I invite you to lean into your own curiosity and discover new things. I'm grateful to everyone who has subbed to my channel and liked and commented on any of my videos. And if you haven't subbed to the channel yet, the invitation remains open for you to join us here in my cozy little studio where we 
sit and chat about life, share stories, stir up nostalgia, and take a break from the bustle of life to appreciate the small things. Next time, we'll be taking a look at various florals. As some of you know, I have a growing collection of dried flowers, and I'd like to explore using them. See you next time.